Do you happen to have PTSD from the teacher red pen in fifth grade? This is why, no wonder. It's really easy to fall into habits of what you've always done. And sometimes what we've always done doesn't really work. One of those things is marking up a student's page with that red pen and telling them everything they did wrong to go rectify and fix. And they might be able to fix it in the moment, but are they really learning from the experience with your conferencing with them? We learn in small chunks. Remember learning about chunking in college? Well, it's the same for students and even shorter, smaller chunks for our striving readers and writers. So here's a way that you can individualize writing goals while chunking it down and making it doable and digestible for your students, no matter where they are on the writing progressions. As you review students' writing, consider finding one or two goals that they can focus on in the moment. Assign each student a writing goal for the week. You can post it on a bulletin board via their student number so that they don't feel called out by their writing goal or what they're working on. And also at the beginning of the week, have them tell you what their writing goal or goals are. Have them write it on a post-it or you do it for them if they're primary learners. For example, we've all had that student that forgets to capitalize I every time they're writing. So give that student their sticky note. This sticky note is going to follow them and will be used at the top of each paper that they are working on, regardless of the content area. This keeps that writing goal fresh in the front of their mind, but also it's personalized and they can solely focus just on that small chunk of a writing goal. They will be more apt to actually learn from it and to solidify a new habit of mind with writing. Try it out. Let us know what you think. What we're trying to help students understand in the science classroom is that if you're going to form an argument about something, first of all, what's the difference between an argument that's, that, comes, that is based on evidence versus an opinion? And um, if you're coming with an opinion, how can you take that opinion and research that opinion and see if there's evidence to support that so that it really does become a solid claim that you can argue as opposed to just an opinion. Um, that's not easy for us to do in the classroom and it's really uncomfortable for all the teachers because nobody wants to walk into a classroom where kids are arguing something and it, and it can get emotional. So we, one of the ways that, um, that we've kind of attacked this is to pick some things that have already been solved in society. So like, for example, we know that um, the sun does not revolve around the earth and we've got lots of evidence and we're pretty sure that nobody believes that anymore. But we can take the evidence from, you know, hundreds of years ago and kids can look at that and they can see how the argument for whether the sun revolves around the earth or the earth revolves around the sun and we can look at the evidence and we can sort of look at how those arguments played out as a research experiment for the students and as a training exercise for them. And then, you know, once they can see the value of using real evidence, then we can get into, you know, topics that are important today, like, like climate change, for example. And um, there's a lot of theories out there that are theories because that may change as new evidence comes to light. And the important thing that we want students to understand is if you've got a body of evidence that supports an argument, then you can make that claim and you can argue that point. And in time, there might be new evidence that might change your argument. And that's the important part of the process of, of science. And um, we'd like everybody to go out into the world being able to just be able to do that, be able to say, here's my evidence and here's, my, here's what I think, here's my argument, here's my claim, and here's how I can back that up. And if the average person can do that, then that will take us you know, miles ahead in society of the way that we approach problem solving and, and just approach you know, old ideas and old values. The 5E instructional model is a way that teachers can organize a unit and take students progressively through a unit. The 5E model begins with the idea of engage. And 
to engage students in a particular concept or idea, there's usually the presentation of some sort of phenomena or a question or a scenario or a situation. And that part is really important because that's what's really going to pique the interest of students. That's what's going to want to make them solve the problem or learn more about it. So the engage part is really important. That's going to be where you're going to hook the kids and you're going to get them motivated to persevere through the learning of something. The second E in the 5E model is explore. And this is a real opportunity for students to um, participate in a laboratory investigation. You might even have them do several different activities in the classroom. Um, you may have them do some research, too. It's really a chance for students to dig into the science. This is not the time when you as the teacher are going to tell them what it is that they have to know. This is really an opportunity for students to kind of learn on their own and to do exactly what the word is, to explore. And that piece is extremely important because they need to be able to experience science and the exploration is the part where they get to do the experiencing of science. So explore should be a little bit open-ended. It should give students a little bit of freedom to go out and try and learn as much as they can about the scenario or the problem or the process that you presented in the engage piece. The third E in the 5E e model is explain. And unfortunately, a lot of teachers often think that that's their time to explain to students everything that they should have picked up through the explore portion of it. But really, we want students to engage in the explanation part as well. Now, the teacher can certainly help out by giving some hints, maybe providing an organizational structure to help students organize the information. But explain is really a chance for students to take everything that they learn during the explore phase and sort of try and put it down on paper. Maybe try and put it in a, in a, in a way that they can present it to other kids. So it can be a discussion. Um, it can even be, um, a part of a presentation. It can be a picture. But it really should be a chance for students to take the information and try and explain what they've learned not necessarily the teacher explaining what the students should have learned, but a chance for the students themselves to be able to explain. Now, on a formative assessment piece, what's really important for teachers to understand about that is it's a real opportunity for teachers to listen to what students have to say or see what they put together because that's really going to help a teacher figure out if the students have learned what they're supposed to have learned by that point. Um, and that's really going to inform the teacher about what the next days or the next week's ex activities need to be in order to make sure that students come away with the knowledge that they're supposed to come away with. So a teacher should use the explain portion of the five E's as a real opportunity to formatively assess students at that point. The fourth E in the 5E model is elaborate. And during the elaborate phase, that's a, ch a chance for both students and teachers often to talk together. Um, it gives them a chance to dig deeper into the, the idea, the content, the experience, whatever it is. This can be a time when students think about the next question or the next idea. It can be a, a, a chance when teachers will say to students that, well, you learned part of it, but you need to go deeper into it. You need to go back and look at something um, a little more deeply than you looked at it the first time. So it's really a chance to push students to think and do science in a deeper way. It's a chance for that communication to go back and forth between the teacher and a student. It's a way to make sure that students are really um, experience science as deeply as we hope that they will. The fifth E in the 5E e model is evaluate. This is the, the part of the 5E e model that teachers probably 
think that they'll be most comfortable with because everybody knows how to give a test and everybody knows how to write a test. However, when you're doing um, the 5E model and this inquiry-based learning, the evaluate should be a chance for students to really show you what they know. And showing you what they know really becomes a performance piece. So this really ties back to the performance expectations. So what you need to do as a teacher is you need to assess them performing the science that they've been doing as they've progressed through the five E's. So the performance should be just as active as the explore and the elaborate phase. So students should be performing something for you. That, that is that they should be showing you what they know in a very active way. They should be developing a model. They should be planning an investigation. They should be citing evidence from an article. They should be communicating information. They should be doing all of those really good, solid practices as part of the evaluation phase as well. 